Hey guys, welcome back to Minute Watch, and this is an Omega Seamaster. This is the uh, professional 300M version, model number 2254.50, and it is a beautiful, beautiful piece, and I really, really like it. Um, uh, this is not mine. Uh, one of my friends let me borrow it for a week while he went on vacation. And uh, I've been taking very good care of it, and I'm timing it, and uh, lusting over it, and telling it dirty secrets, and, and other things. Um, <laughs> let me just get this light kind of situation a little, situated a little better. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, gosh, there's a lot to say, so this video is probably going to be really long. So just letting you know, this video is going to be really long, probably like 16.8 minutes. So stick around. Um... This is probably my favorite watch right now. Um, I really, really like this thing. And it is considered a modern classic. Its first run year was the year 2000, and Omega discontinued it, uh, discontinued <laughs> in 2007. There are a few different models in this lineup, such as the GMT, the Great White, the Electric Blue, the America's Cup, the Bond Edition, and some others. But I'm not going to get into that because we only got so much time. And that would be make it like a 30 minute video. Um, this uses the Omega 1120 movement. Which is an Omega modified chronometer grade. ETA 2892-A2 COSC certified automatic mechanical movement. And what Omega has done uh, was they added two extra jewels for a total of 23. Some rhodium plating if I'm not mistaken. And I think... Uh, a flat Nerevox balance spring was added and that is a uh, nickel iron alloy balance spring which uh, which reduces accuracy variations due to temperature differences so that's kind of cool I'm not sure if that's stock on the uh, the base and a movement but um, that's what's in here so uh, the movement beats at 28,800 beats per hour it is windable it is hackable and it has a shock protective system a protective system called uh, Inca Block. I'm not sure if, if that's wrong. Let me know. But from my understanding, it uses the Inca Block shock protective system, uh, protection system. Uh, the 1120 movement is the precursor for the in-house coaxial escapement movements of today's Omegas. So this is a very important development step in those newer movements. Uh, I have timed this watch at plus 2.6 seconds per day. And just a smidgen under 44 hours of a power reserve. So, really good. This watch was just serviced about two weeks ago, and it's doing. It's a. It's in great shape uh, physically and emotionally. It's a happy watch. This is such a happy little watch. <laughs> um, let's see, the sapphire dome crystal. As you can see there, it's just slightly domed. It, has, it is also anti-reflective. Uh, scratch resistance because it's sapphire. Very nice, very clear, very clear. Uh, the case is 316L marine grade stainless steel. So it's very corrosion resistant. And uh, is, uh, its styling is a, comp uh, a combination of beautiful brushing and subtle polishing here and there like around the tops of the lugs and all the way around the cases just a little bit of a polish here between the two brushings it's a very subtle but yet uh, elegant design it's classy you can wear this watch anywhere um, you could you could uh, go swimming diving with this parasailing uh, uh, bungee jumping uh, uh, ballroom dancing, uh, uh, MI5 missions, saving the world, the big wave surfing, going to, uh, going to uh, your first uh, prom. <laughs> I don't know what to... um, you know what? This this watch would be excellent going to the Acropolis in Portland. If you if you know what that is, then give me a holler <laughs> because of the UV lights right in front of the strippers. Uh, um, um, let's see. Uh, the case is excellently sized. It's not very thick. You can clearly see it's got a very good profile to it. It's very thin. Let me let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to put it up against a another 41 millimeter dive style watch, the Orient Blu-ray. Uh, 
And the Orient Blu-ray is a fantastic, affordable, diver-style watch. Very, very beautiful, very shiny, very elegant. Um, but just look at how thick the Orient Blu-ray is compared to this Omega. Um, the Omega is just clearly better in every single way. Every, every. Except that being blue, the Orient Blu-ray is obviously better at being blue. <laughs> giggity, giggity. Um, I like... Except uh, unless you get the blue version of this, then pff, forget it. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at that dial. Uh, it's got that beautiful Omega. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, what did I do? Eat Cheetos or something? Jeez. The uh, <laughs> that dial is really cool with that with that wave design. Gives kind of a 3D effect. It's, it gives it some depth. Love the four lines on there. Um, I love the second hand because it goes pretty much damn near all the way to the edge of the dial. And I really, really like when second hands do that. Uh, this second hand is actually turning a little bit orange because this is a, an older watch. And the gentleman who owns this watch, who had it recently serviced, denied them. Uh, when they asked them if the, he wanted to have that repainted, and, uh, he said it gives a, a nice kind of a vintagey feel to it, and, I, and I'm in, in agreement. It, it, I like that it's kind of getting orange. It's a little bit more vintagey. Uh, see that date window? Love the date window. Love the fact that the background of the date window is black and it matches the dial. This is very very clean clean dial. Uh, I love the indexes. I love the sword hands. The newer model of this watch. Uh, has the skeleton hands, which uh, offers a, a lot less loom, and they also use the uh, Rolex style circular indexes. I prefer this version. This version is just so clean. Um, if if they were the same price, and I would have to choose between this version and the newer Seamaster 300 Pro, I would pick this one. Uh, this is just such a cleaner, cleaner version. Love it. Um, the bezel. The bezel is not as easy to turn as some other watches because you know it's it's inherent with the design of the bezel. There's not a lot of grippy, but it can be done. It's not impossible. It just takes a little bit more of a grip, um, and it feels it feels nutty. That's what I describe the uh, bezel movement as. Grab a couple of walnuts and click them together. You'll you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's a nutty, positive. Uh, uh, commanding experience, if you will, it uh, exudes excellence, and that's you know no no-brainer for Omega. That's it's very good. Uh, let's see what else can I talk about here. Uh, blah, 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 looking at my notes, looking at my notes. Okay, so there's a signed crown. Uh, you can see that crown. There you go. The Omega signed the crown. The Omega signed helium escape valve. Well, let's talk about that helium escape valve. Now, some of you already know what that's for, but um, I, I actually had to research it because I had no idea. I'm a noob, um, but this is what I have. Uh, this is what I ha I have uh, learned. And please correct me if I am completely wrong. I'm not an expert at this. I've probably never gone past 20 feet in the ocean in my entire life. And if it was, then um, you know I was unconscious and somebody took me there. Um, but this watch can go obviously really deep uh, to deep sea diving if it has a helium escape valve and deep sea diving doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get wet okay uh, you're gonna be in you're gonna be in a dive bell uh, so let me just draw a picture for you so here's a dive bell okay and uh oops <laughs> and then the dive bells have like windows and like maybe like a that's a freaking ghost from Pac-Man. I'm just going to dive bell. Okay, I'm, I'm not just, this is just like a terrible, terrible drawing. And then there's like a window and don't, don't turn into a minion. Don't turn into a minion. Okay. So inside dive bell is just super anatomically correct person. is a diver, the diver. And um, so it's designed to go beyond 250 feet for extended periods of time. Inside of this dive bell is a mixture of oxygen, helium, and sometimes nitrogen. Now, 
when you wear a watch uh, in that dive bell, and this is probably the grossest, terrible, most terrible watch ever, but you get the idea. Jeez, why can't I draw a watch? You draw a freaking perfectly awesome dive bell. I mean, that's like a museum piece, and it's just this terrible watch. Anyway, so when you go into that dive bell and you submerge to your 250 feet, the helium will permeate all of your watch's uh, waterproofing situations. And the helium will build up inside that watch. And when you are surfacing in that dive bell, the pressure buildup in the watch is so great that the crystal pops right off. And your watch is done. So to prevent that, watch companies have devised a very ingenious solution called the helium escape valve. Uh, some, some I believe are push button, but this one's a screw down. As you are ascending slowly in your dive bell, decompressing, you just kind of unscrew it and release the helium, and then your watch is safe. Uh, the biggest problem people have is leaving that open. So you just got to close it back up again, and you're fine. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see what else can I talk about here. Okay, little measurements. Now, I didn't really want to risk scratching this up. I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure it won't, but I'm not going to risk it with my even, even with my plastic caliper. But you can be sure that this is a 41 millimeter case and the lug width is 20 millimeters. What I did do was measure the lug to lug width, and which that is the paper. 47.5 millimeters and the thickness is 11.8 millimeters <laughs> and we're back so let's get to the the loom the plume loom the plume the plume let's get to the plume and might as well because this thing is so freaking bright it's like a plume of light it just kind of explodes so I'm going to turn up the ISO level to ISO 1600 because that's more reflected of what I'm seeing um, because I have super bright lights of heads kind of like an El Nino super heat wave in my face and turn off the light and I actually have some other lights here that I should probably turn off let's just turn off this other light here there you go and got that uh, tablet in the background but that's fine look at that it's already glue it's already glowing I'm just gonna turn that put that down so it's already glowing and um, Let's give it some super bright magna light. <laughs> Nuclear explosion. And that's it. And would you just look at that loom? That is fantastic. Um, uh, they use Super, lo super Luminova, and uh, even though this watch is years and years old, it's just still really, really good. This will stay illuminated like this for many minutes, and all night long it will be kind of just crispy kind of just bright and crispy uh, hard to beat this loom dare I say that the Seiko orange monster series of watches will be similar um, well we, we don't know I might make a comparison video later to find out uh, but brilliant loom excellent excellently done kick-ass kick -ass oh would you just look at that I like the I like the blue Maybe I should make a blue background. That would be kind of cool. Anyway, this is my tablet. So we got uh, pretty much that all of, all of the way. Um, this is not the bracelet that it comes with it. This is the, uh, this is obviously not a bracelet, it's a strap. This is a strap from the GMT model. And the owner of this watch wanted to keep it kind of contiguous uh, with the theme. And uh, this strap does say Seamaster Professional. Uh, the, uh, the wave theme is continued underneath. And here's the... Here's the case back. Also, this is a pre-red dot model. Uh, newer models of Omegas will have a red dot on the case. And uh, when you open up the case back, it will break that red dot signifying that uh, it was opened by a non-authorized Omega situation. I guess it's for warranty purposes. <clears throat> we can see that uh, the wave theme and the seahorse. Actually, a really nice case back. Um, what else we got here? Oh, let's take a look at the bracelet. This is the bracelet that comes with, the, with this watch. This is the actual bracelet. It is very nice, uh, kind of shiny, kind of very shiny. Uh, obviously, it's going to have solid, uh, salad, 
salad links. It's gonna have salad links. Yeah, it's gonna have yams and and corn and lettuce. It's a salad link. <laughs> solid link. It's a solid link, brother. And uh, solid ends as well. Solid end links, which is really good. And um, if the if the bracelet you get on your watch does not have squared uh, access ports for your spring bars, if it's round, it's fake. Um, so when you're buying a watch like this, uh, or exactly this watch, make sure that's not round. That's a fake watch. Um, very beautiful bracelet. It's not very noisy at all. Very, very, very nicely done bracelet. Everything is beautifully brushed. Um, it's got a it's got a nice heft to it. You can tell these excellent metal, and it's just it's just a good bracelet. So. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about with this watch. Um, I'm going to post some links in the about section below of how you can, uh, uh, reputable places you can look for one of these watches, as well as how you can spot fakes. So I'm definitely going to sell a liver and maybe stand at the corner and do whatever I can to get one of these. And uh, someday soon you might see one that's going to be blue. So <laughs> that's my review of this Omega Seamaster uh, Professional. 300M and thanks for watching. Mm.